There are several different shared tracers available today on the market and I'm going to run through them with you. Pretty much when you walk into your tackle store you will see them all sitting on the shelf like this. Doesn't matter how they are displayed. You get what they call single hook tracers or double hook tracers. You also get tracers that are totally completely done. All you've got to do is attach your leader to the hook, uh, to the actual swivel and your sinker to the main line. It is very very simple, ready to do. So first of all, I'm going to run through the first one. It does take a while to take out the packaging unfortunately. This is a two per, two per pack trace. And this is pretty much what it looks like. Swivel on the top, a snooting that goes down to your sinker, and of course your shared trace. You'll always find that your snooting is a lot longer. And everybody asks why in the old days we used to have a short sinker and these days we've actually got a long sinker trace. The reason being if a shad is actually biting and you can feel it when you hit you're actually pulling against the float and the bait first before you move the sinker. If it was the other way around you'd be pulling against the sinker line and then against the actual bait so the resistance becomes a lot more and more difficult to set the hook. So always remember, don't cut the, your sinker trace down. Keep it the length that it is made and bought at, and then basically use it as is. Okay, that is the first one I wanted to show you. Very simple to bait up, I'll show you that later on. That is a standard three per pack. It has got no nylon on it. The reason being, in a lot of conditions, you either need to make your trace a lot shorter, or a lot longer. This one here, it obviously works out a lot cheaper if you buy it this way, then uh, made up. And then you're gonna have to cut it down anyway. The next one is our double hook trace. The basic double hook trace consists of a float, a swivel, and two hooks. The nice part about this one is that all these floats are soft. They are not like the conventional hard, uh, hard uh, cork like this over here. What happens with the cork float, if you hit against the rocks in it, these things tend to break and break up all over the place and you have all these pieces of cork. This high density foam cork basically is hard, you can't break it, it's reusable, it saves you money in the long run using these high density foam floats or corks if I can call it that. These corks, the actual dinkum cork is very very expensive these days. The high density foam is a lot cheaper. Okay guys, you're saving money. It lasts longer, it works better, compared to cork, more expensive, doesn't last as long. Cork trees are under huge pressure. It's also very, very expensive to process. Um, hence the price of cork being so expensive these days, guys. 